Cos 102, understanding Yeshua, Jesus, very God, very man, son of God, son of Elohim, the unique personality that straddles the entire course of human history and before. The history is said to be his story. It's all about him. The kingdom is his. The power is his. The glory is his. And we're excited by his grace. We have the privilege by his spirit to break open the scriptures, to see the mysteries of the kingdom and of the king that are right there in the pages of scripture. Today in lesson 18, we'll go to the epilogue part one, the final word. What shall I do with Yeshua, Jesus, who is called the Messiah? What shall I do, you know, with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? That was a question that Pontius Pilate asked in Matthew 27, uh, Matthew 27, 22. That question is still ringing out today. Father, by your spirit, speak to our hearts. Whatever remains from what we've been studying, whatever needs to be re-emphasized, we say, have your right or way to speak to us and grant us understanding so that we can be able ambassadors of the kingdom, representing the king whom we know by revelation. We bless you for answering our prayer. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. The question of what to do with Yeshua, Jesus, is one that whether they like it or not, he rings in the ears of all the various religions that are opposed to Yeshua as the king of the earth. And he rings even more in those who claim to be Christian or kingdom citizens but deny his deity. The question is, what saved you? The blood of a human being it cannot save. What saved you? The blood of a mere prophet cannot save you. So, what anyone does with the real Yeshua, Jesus is a personal choice. Let no one, however, be in any doubt whatsoever of the consequences of rejecting He who is the only way, the truth, and the life, and the very essence of Him being Elohim made flesh. Brothers and sisters, Yeshua came as Emmanuel, God made flesh. He came as a baby in a manger born amongst animals is no longer in the manger i know that religion loves to have the picture of him in the manger the picture you have of him determines your attitude to him if you keep fixated on the baby in the manger the helpless babe you will never be able to worship him you'll never be able to you know to bow before him you'll never be able to open your heart for him to dwell as king as lord men and brethren he lived as a human, entirely by faith, without property. He had nowhere to lay his head. He had no assets, as men count assets. His desire was to do the will of the Father. He said it was his food, and it was what drove him. His needs for physical sustenance were provided by the Father through the faithful women who were grateful for his ministering to them and whose eyes were opened to see that this was not a mere prophet and they ministered to his needs. He died semi-naked as the ultimate lamb of Elohim on the old rugged cross. Men and brethren hung between heaven and earth. And again, this is interesting. This is another picture of him that religion lost. That picture of the helpless man hanging on the cross is no longer there. So when you see what they call a crucifix, a cross with a figure there, you are not talking about Yeshua. He's not. Remember, we are told in the first and second commandment, you shall not have any image of Elohim, of anything in heaven above, on earth, under the earth, in the waters. No image is acceptable. So those who insist on carrying a cross with him there, they should know that it's an idol they are carrying, not him. Because no longer they again, if you keep fixated on him, hanging on the cross, you will never be able to receive him in his fullness of his divinity. So it's important we know that by his physical death as a human, his spirit, man, and soul existed the world to snatch the keys of authority which Satan had deceived Adam and Eve and, and held as the God of this world. He took it off from him. And brothers and sisters, when he rose from the dead, the third day, he said, All power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me, in Matthew 28, 18. Why? Because he had taken that key away from Satan. And brothers and sisters, 
Holy Spirit did the quickening as Romans 8, 11 says, and he arose from the dead. And those who believe in him in all ages, those who live before he came on earth, they look forward by faith to his coming. So they receive the fruit of it. And those of us who are living in the now, we are looking back to 2,000 years ago. And we believe we will so by faith are justified. Brothers and sisters, we are told that he was crucified for our sins. He was raised for our justification, Romans chapter 4, 25. And before his followers, he ascended on high bodily, bodily. He didn't ascend as a spirit. That body with which he did the assignment on earth was a body prepared for him as Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5 says, a body has thou prepared for me. And that was the body he said to Thomas, check the nail prints, check by sight. It's I. He ate with them in that body. Forty days he appeared in that body and he ascended bodily. And we've told you before that that creates an extraordinary opportunity that before or at the throne of grace, as one of the Godhead, seated right there, is one who has born flesh and blood like you and I. So in that sense, he's our near king's man in the throne of grace. Men and brethren, he seated at the right hand of the Father, waiting for the exact hour, the exact minute, the exact second, that it was determined for him to return in great power and glory to consummate all the dealings of Yahweh with humans. If you look at Acts 1, 9 to 11 and Revelation 22, 12, in Revelation it says, And behold, I come quickly, my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Brothers and sisters, that Yeshua is the very subject of Scripture. It's all about him. So anybody telling you that it's not important, uh, you know, and comparing with a country in the, in the Caribbean basin and say, come there, nobody knows the prime minister. You come for the blue water. You come for the sun. You come for the weather. You come to enjoy yourself. You don't need to know the prime minister. Well, that's human countries. That's not for the things of the kingdom. He is the only way to the Father. He is, the kingdom is his, the power is his, the glory is his. He is the express image of the Father, manifested to human beings. You want to see the Father, see Yeshua. You want to receive the Father, receive Yeshua. Brothers and sisters, these things are serious. So let us base our faith on him, on the full counsel of the world, and not on the opinions of men or the works of people who have used his name to amass fame and fortune. So-called kingdom preachers who don't know the kingdom, they live an anti-kingdom lifestyle, hawking their wares at expensive prices for you to buy their revelation, to buy as if it's their own. If it's revelation available him for the body, how can you then go and put a lock on it, put a paywall and a firewall, and you got to pay through your nose to assess that special revelation? That is how they deceive people. Men and brethren, those who claim to have a superior knowledge that depreciates the person of Yeshua, uh, by so doing, declare themselves as not part of his kingdom. The degree of love that drove Yeshua to make the sacrifice of the incarnation is simply too high for the finite mind to fully comprehend. And that's why we can only receive the truth by faith and then reason will follow. You don't go by reason. Job said, can you by such and find Elohim? The answer is no. You will receive him by faith, in simplicity of heart like a babe, then reason will follow. If reason leans, there will be confusion. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 1 to 16. The natural man, the carnal mind, receiveth not the things of the spirit of Elohim, for they are foolishness unto him. It's foolish to suggest that God somehow became a human, born in a manger. People could touch him. He could be hungry. He could walk about. He could be tired. He could sleep. After a crusade, he could sleep on a boat. It's something that the natural mind cannot comprehend. That's why you don't go with reasoning. You don't go with the mental faculty. You go with the faculty of faith. Faith sees the invisible. Faith possesses the impossible. When you receive it by faith like a baby, every other thing will fall into place. And remember, nobody can know Yeshua except the Father first revealed it to him. So while waiting 
for the day you return, we need to mature. From the day we are born again, we don't stay there. We need to mature. Our Elohim is one who does things by process. We are called to grow in grace. Since we enter the kingdom as babes, with limited understanding of our position in him and who is in us. We are told by Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, to him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. We are to grow in grace and in the knowledge of him. I don't know about you. I had to grow in grace. There were many things that I was not able to attain to, but with time, the Lord did it by himself. That is what I know about process and i tell to everybody don't ever be embarrassed by where you are today don't also be fixated by where you are today open your heart the lord is going to process you from glory to glory once your heart is right with him even if you are dealing with certain things you are struggling with certain things your heart is right with the lord all things will work together for good because he will orchestrate it he'll put you in the right ministry with the right pastor doing the work there he will also give you teachers who he will use to open your eyes he will put apostles and prophets into your life and your job as a believer is to receive all the lord has ordained for you and you grow and the stages of growth in service also as a minister are very clear how do we begin ministry we begin ministry just serving like the disciples they just served yeshua will have a crusade and you know what after ministering he has them Give them food. They say there's no food. They take bread and, and fish and multiply it. After praying, they will go and distribute. After that, they will gather everything. They will number the people. And then they will put everything together. Then when they are going across the, the lake, he will go to get some snooze. And for that little time of passing the lake, he will get a snooze and they will be rowing and rowing. They were just serving. And that's how we begin the kingdom. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your heart. Just serving. But a time came, Yeshua told them in John 15 from verse 9, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love had no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Now listen to this. To the people who were serving without knowing what they were doing, just serving because that was the only thing they could do. He announced a promotion in verse 14 of John 15. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. When you learn to obey the Lord without reasoning with him why you shouldn't obey, what he says to you, you obey. He says, give that, you give. He says, do that, you do. When you learn to do that, you are walking into a promotion to a place of friendship with him. He says, henceforth I call you not servants. He said, I announce your promotion. From today, you are no longer servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father have made known unto you. Friendship is a state of intimacy with the Lord where he bears his heart to us. We are not seeking his hand. We are seeking his heart. We are seeking his face. When we are dealing in the realm of friendship, and that is what the Lord wants us to know. That's what he did with Moses. Moses were told in Psalm 107, 103, verse 7, he revealed his ways to Moses, his acts to Israel, his miracles, signs, and wonders to Israel. To Moses, he revealed his ways. Brothers and sisters, may you become a friend of Yeshua. One, he can share intimate things about the future. And that comes about when you are you have your priority right. You are not seeking signs and wonders and miracles. There are some believers. This is what is causing them to be confused. They are looking for who is the latest to come to town. We can do this miracle, do that sign, do that, do that. They are running from pillar to post. The Lord say no. Wait on the Lord. The Lord say, learn to obey me. Grow in grace. Study the word. Get the word in you. Get your training to be a minister of the New Testament. When that happens, signs and wonders will follow you, not you chasing signs and wonders. That's what Mark 16, read 17 and 18, you see there. And then verse 20, the Lord walked with them, signs and wonders following them. So we do not need to rent huge stadium, compose songs, sing special songs in a special way. Hallelujah. 
put special stage effects and lightning and spend loads of money for Holy Spirit to show up. No, if we get it right, our heart is right as his temple and is pure and there's no complication. Holy Spirit who created the earth rim by breathing into it the breath of life, he so, you know, will also show up in anything we do. Where two or three are gathered in his name, Yeshua is there. And Yeshua and Holy Spirit, they work together. Men and brethren, it is important. So as we mature in that kind of walk with him, we also grow into the realm of sonship. Yeshua announced sonship to the, the same disciples he announced to be friends. When he rose from the dead in John 20 verse 17, he announced them to now sons of Elohim and therefore his brethren. If you have Luke, if you read uh, Hebrews chapter 2, you see the same principle in chapter, verse 9 to verse 15. Sonship is a state of maturity in him. A state where we come to mature, to know the will of our Father by the power of the Holy Spirit and to do the will of the Father. And the Father can entrust an aspect of his estate to you. It could be your workplace. It could be your neighborhood. It could be your home. It could be things where you are, places where you are. Sonship is very critical. We need to grow to that place of sonship. It doesn't just happen. It's a process. Men and brethren, John 20, 17, Romans 8, 14 to 17, Galatians 4, 1 to 7, and Hebrews 2, 1 to 18, and Matthew 6, 24 to 34. That's what discipleship is all about. Bringing us to the place where we move from believing on Yeshua for bread and butter and what we need to become followers of Yeshua who walk in his steps. And it is unfortunate that Satan has corrupted this maturation process through the pseudo kingdom movement so people just go and cherry pick a few kingdom scriptures and throw it like firecrackers and people who don't know the full counsel of Elohim get confused process the sign of the times are clear Yeshua Jesus is coming soon let us live in great carefulness of what we believe how we live and prepare our hearts and minds to receive him any day he shows up to, he decides to come we don't know the hour we can only know the signs let us therefore allow holy spirit to perfect holiness in us in thought in word in deed in attitude let us love yahweh our heavenly father with all our hearts our soul and strength and our neighbors as ourselves on these two rest all we can ever be and do let us in love and great conviction present this same Yeshua to those who are lost, that Elohim in him pay the price for their redemption. All they need to do is to believe in their heart, confess with their tongue, and they are saved. Brothers and sisters, let's be bold to confess him as the divine personality he is, who was incarnated to shed holy blood, so that all who believe can be saved. Matthew 10, 23. Uh, 32, 33, and John 3, 16 to 17. So there's a time of reckoning coming. There's a time when all who claim to be in Yeshua will determine if, which is the Yeshua you believe. Is he a mere human messenger? Yahweh sent to proclaim the kingdom just as Moses was a mere human messenger who used to download the Torah. Is that who he is? Or was he an angel who was sent from heaven to deliver a message of hope to the world is it what it was an angel or who the holy scriptures present clearly as we've seen in this course as an incarnation of elohim in the earth rim to provide for himself a sinless sacrifice that paid the price for the original sin of adam and eve so that those who believe will be recovered as sons of elohim in the earth rim this manifestation of elohim in the earth rim had to be in the form of a begotten son whose lifestyle modeled how Yahweh, the father, once adopted sons who come to him to live. So it's three options. Was he a messenger? Was he an angel? Or is he Elohim made flesh? This is it. That is where it sums up. So Hebrews chapters 1 and 2 tells us something very, very important, men and brethren, which we cannot by any means forget. Hebrews chapter 1 and 2 tells us that he is the express image of the Father. 
it makes a very clear case for his divinity and other scriptures. Brothers and sisters, we will discuss in the next lesson the Shema of Israel that says the Lord our Elohim is one. Yes, we're going to see the nuances of that oneness, the match that is revealed in Holy Scriptures because it's through Holy Scriptures that we base everything. So, brothers and sisters, there are some people who get confused. You know, by way of apologetics, there are people who get confused by certain scriptures. For instance, in, in John 14, 28, you have heard how I say unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you will rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And people tend to say, okay, no, that's evidence. He's not God. Well, that thing was him speaking in his humanity, pointing people to the Father. As long as he was in the human form, he was on assignment and he exalted the Father, pointed us to the Father and revealed the possibility of our having a relationship with the Father, not as an unknown God, but as the very Father, just as he himself modeled for us. Men and brethren, that same John 14, let's not forget in verse 5. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Yeshua said to him in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you have known me, you will have known my Father also, and from henceforth you know him, <laughs> you have seen him. And Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And he sufficed us. Verse 9, Yeshua said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet you have not yet known me? Remember that John had known him. For John wrote in John 1, 1 to 3, In the beginning was the word, the word was Elohim, the word was Elohim, and everything was created by him and for him. John knew that. So he was asking Philip, So all these three and a half years I've been with you, are you telling me you did not, you've not known, you've not understood this? Remember Peter was able to say, when he asked me, Matthew 16, you are the Messiah, the son of the living Elohim, meaning the incarnation, the Messiah. That's what the Messiah was supposed to be. And say that you don't know me. He who has seen me, he told Philip, has seen the Father. And how sayest thou, show us the Father? Believers thou know that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Brothers and sisters, there are also some who are confused by the reality that after Yeshua reigns for a thousand years on earth in his second coming, he will hand over the kingdom to the Father after putting down all rebellion. We're saying these things for you to know that there are people who latch on some scriptures to confuse you, but get to know where they are coming from. In 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 24, then come at the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to Elohim, even the Father. That is, at the end of the millennial reign, he will tell the Father, mission accomplished, everything is done. When he will have put up, he say, verse 25, you know, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, and he will be the only one, for he must reign till he put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he had put all things under his feet, but when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted which put all things under him. That's the Father. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subdued to the Father, and I have put all things under him, that God may be all in all. This scripture is simple. It does not negate his divinity. It simply reinforces the reality that though Elohim is one, there are divine personalities with specific roles, within the Godhead, and the Father's preeminence is shown by the reality he always sat on the throne. Holy Spirit has come onto this earth to do assignment. Yeshua was incarnated for an assignment, and this has been referenced in the course that at the end of the day, there are aspects of the Godhead we have not full knowledge of. Anybody speaking about things of Elohim must be able to put that caveat. We don't know every single thing, every single detail about him. Why? Because the Lord himself has made it clear that there will be a time when all mysteries will pass away. And for now, the Lord said, base what we know of him on scripture. For instance, in the book of John 
chapter 5, something happened in verse 16. Therefore did the Jews persecute Yeshua and sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Yeshua answered them, My father walketh hitherto, and I walk. Verse 18. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that Elohim was his father, making himself a war with Elohim. They knew what it means to say son of Elohim. That was the accusation against him. That's what they rose against him. Men and brethren, the divinity of Yeshua is part of the mystery of the Godhead. So we receive what the word says, and Deuteronomy 29, 29, we repeat it again. The secret things belong unto the Lord our Elohim, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. And when you now match it with Revelation 10, 7, where it says, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, then shall begin to sound the mystery of Elohim shall be, when the seventh angel shall sound, the mystery of Elohim shall be finished, as he had declared to his servants the prophets. A day is coming when there will be no more mystery. We will be illuminated, we will be perfected in our knowledge and our understanding. We we'll see Elohim as he is. There will be nothing mysterious about him. That is part of what we are going to. That is part of where the Lord is preparing us for. And so for now, what do we do? Let's base us, our, our knowledge of him on what the word says. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 3.16, Without controversy, great is the mystery of, of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Incarnation. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles. Believed on in the world. Received up unto glory. Men and brethren, and in the book of uh, John 14, 1 to 6, he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I'll come for you, and I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Men and brethren, scripture is very clear. Based on the revelation of this course, we can now know the depth, the height, the weight of the love of Elohim when he sent his only begotten son to save us. Let us preach this truth to all sinners within our loop of influence. And when we do it, we know with confidence that if Elohim manifested in Yeshua HaMashiach, went to the cross on behalf of the people we are speaking to, we speak with confidence knowing that the blood that is shed is able to save them. By way of assignment, number one, please share five truths which you personally receive in this lesson as a person. Number two, what would you say to those who claim that Yeshua is not God and that he's inferior to the Father? What would you say to them? Brothers and sisters, we thank you for listening and I'm going to pray now and make an announcement. Father in heaven, thank you for what you're doing, the way you are systematically unveiling scriptures to us. Lord, just have your way. Let your word produce fruit in everyone. In Yeshua's name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day by about 10.30 a.m. UK time and that's the same at Nigerian time and you, it's either Apostle George Monday to Friday uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace uh, Friday to Sunday and then in the evening of Sunday we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6 after 6 another one up to 7 so please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks this course you just listened to all these lessons you know there's an ebook we have free of charge everything we do is free but more importantly you can actually do your program on you know ebooks you can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdombooksclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media 
you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com. We love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.